Hello and welcome to TV Tutorials. My name is Doug and today let us do computer practice info, shall we? Let's get right to it. Right. On this episode, we will be dissecting components of a computer. But before we can even do that, we need to understand what is a computer. A computer can be defined as a general purpose machine that uses these various components to perform four general functions. These four general functions include collecting data, processing data, storing information, and communicating that information. Right, now that we understand what is a computer and all the four general functions of a computer, we can look at the components of a computer. Components of a computer are basically devices that a computer uses to perform those four general functions. Now, seeing that the computer uses these different components to perform all these various functions, those four general functions, those components or devices can be classified under groups. These groups are input devices, processing devices, storage devices, and output devices. Now, let us look at the first group of components, which are input devices. Your input devices include components or devices like your mouse, your keyboard. If you have a joypad, your joypad, your microphone, all those devices that the computer uses to collect data, right? Let's go back to a mouse. Basically, you use your mouse to navigate around your computer. Therefore, the computer uses the mouse to receive data, right? Same thing applies with your, your keyboard. When you type on your keyboard, say for an example, you have a spreadsheet open or a Word document and you are trying to type your name. The computer will use the keyboard to receive that command in typing your name. Therefore, the keyboard can be classified as an input device. The next group of devices are called processing devices, right? Basically, what happens with processing devices is after the computer has collected data, that data needs to be processed. It needs to be turned into information, information that the computer understands, right? Let's take the microphone for an example. As I speak into the microphone, the microphone receives that data, which is my voice, um, my spoken word, everything that I'm saying or everything that is happening around the microphone, right? The microphone would record those sounds and then it would take that sound into the computer so that it can be processed. It can be turned into information that the computer understands. So now that the computer, the computer understands the data it has collected, meaning it has processed that data through CPU, the computer then needs to save that information. It needs to store that information somewhere, right? This is where now devices such as your hard drive, your ROM, your RAM, your USBs, this is where those devices come in. Those devices are referred to as storage devices. This is where the computer stores the information it has processed. Now that the computer has stored the information it has processed, the computer needs to communicate that information. This is where devices such as your printer, your monitor, your projector, those devices are referred to as output devices because they communicate the information that the computer has stored and has processed. All these components or devices that I just mentioned to you guys, they all fall under one umbrella group or one universal group, which is called hardware. Basically, hardware are all the electronic and mechanical devices of a computer that you can physically touch. So you can classify hardware under two groups, which are Hardwares that you find inside of your computer. This would be your ROM or RAM memory chips, your video cards, your hard drive, your CPU, your motherboard, everything that is inside your system unit or your tower or your computer that you can touch. That is the first group, right? The other group of hardware are peripherals. Usually these are devices or parts of the computer that are outside of the computer, like your mouse, for an example your keyboard for an example your microphone for an example your usb your external hard drive if it is a part of a computer that you can attach to the computer outside of the computer itself 
then it is referred to as a peripheral device. After hardware, there is software. Basically, a computer consists of hardware and software. Your hardware are all the devices that you physically touch, like my microphone, my keyboard, all those components that we just discussed. Then another part of computer is software. This is part of the computer that you cannot physically touch. These are codes, uh, instructions, commands, programs. A um, couple of examples that I can give you guys are if you have music on your computer, right? If you have videos on your computer, if you have um, photos or pictures or images, if you have um, Word documents, your spreadsheet documents, if you have um, games, all those um, kind of uh, parts of computer, they fall under software because we cannot physically touch them. Unlike your keyboards, your mouse, your screen, your printer, you, you can touch those. But unfortunately, you cannot touch a, a video game on your computer. You cannot touch the music on your computer. It is a file. It is software, right? There is a fundamental um, difference between hardware and software. That difference is that one, you can physically touch. The other, you cannot physically touch, right? So just remember that, that hardware are devices that you can physically touch and software are devices that you cannot physically touch. So as soon as you start thinking about devices that you can physically touch, your keyboard should come in mind. Your, your monitor should come in mind. Your printer, your motherboard, your, your mouse, all those kind of devices, they are hardware, right? However, your Microsoft Office, your video games, your music, you cannot touch those. So they are software. Thank you for tuning in. Remember to like, share, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel for more lesson videos by myself and my team at TV Tutorials. Click on that bell icon so that you are instantly notified every time we drop a new lesson video. Until then, adios.